While Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's lover and possible supplier of girls, is being housed by her wealthy friends so she can skirt over the allegations that she and dozens of other billionaires took advantage of children because they're sick fucking degenerates, we will be analyzing the next ten entries in Rusty Shackelford's glorious documentation of Little St. James. Remember that we're still in the time when Epstein was alive and sitting in a prison cell, and I want you to keep that in the back of your head while we go through these videos. We're sort of in the lull period when it comes to what's in Rusty's tapes, as will be evident during the first few videos we discussed today. But there are a few very notable surprises in store that Epstein certainly wouldn't want us knowing about. Before we start there, however, I want to thank Redline and Lord Cal for pointing out my satanic panic in the last video. I had mistakenly said that a statue on Epstein's island of what appeared to be Poseidon had bat-like wings, but it turns out I had fit my tinfoil hat a little too snugly on my head, as this is kind of obviously a fishtail. Thank you once again to Redline and Lord Cal for pointing that out and giving these statues a little more sense. So, without further delay and hopefully with a little more visual accuracy, let's jump back into the fray that is the fucked up workings of Epstein. Epstein's Pedophile Island. The first video for today and the 21st overall starts off right where the last one left off, even being uploaded on the same day, July 21st. Rusty is looking at a strange radio-like device built into the rocks. There are a couple of wires here and there, but based on the shape of the box, it looks to me to be some kind of communication device. I can't say that with any amount of certainty, however it appears from this perspective that it would be something someone would utilize for some kind of radio communication. Or maybe I'm just making a baseless assumption, I don't know. What I do know, though, is that the rest of the video appears to have wires and mystery technology as its theme throughout. There's a nice little mystery box built into the island housing pipes and wires, alongside a smaller square built to the ground with even more wires and shit. Honestly, none of this is all too suspect. With all the construction going on on the island at the time, it's not too surprising to learn that plumbing and electrical work may have been involved. The only thing I'm really curious about is that first outing of wires we saw, since it appears a little more out of place than the rest of what's housed on the island. Rusty's next video, uploaded on July 22nd, also doesn't tell us too much, but something out of place does make an appearance. This particular video showcases Great St. James, another island Epstein owns that just adjacent to Little St. James. It also seems like Great St. James is smaller for whatever reason, at least on video it appears that way. Seems like we have a bit of an Iceland-Greenland thing going on. I guess Epstein thought taking after the Vikings while naming things would make him look badass. Well, it certainly didn't save his ass, nor did it make any less weird the giant crochet project he was constructing on Great St. James. Seriously, I have no idea what this giant fuck you circle is. Looks like a hundred foot diameter summoning circle made of yarn. I guess that's why he's got construction trucks on the island too. Had to make sure his world record knitting project was coming along well. What a shame that he'll allegedly never see the finished project come to fruition. But at least our good pal Epstein was able to see the creation that steals viewers' souls in the following video, the creepy ass sundial smack in the middle of Little St. James. Glad to see that little feature of the island didn't change since this whole thing started. Although what appears to be a new find is this weird lid looking thing underneath what looks to be an electrical box of some kind. It seems like there's something underneath, but I can't really make out what it is. Part of me wants to put on the tinfoil hat and say this has something to do with an underground tunnel system of some sort. But it's not definite, nor can I say with any amount of certainty that this is big enough for someone to fit inside of if it does lead underground. Certainly not someone of Epstein's stature anyway. Although what is a bit curious to me is the absence of the black tarp on Epstein's roofless beachside getaway. Here we get a definitive look at the roofless house and can see that, yes, something has changed. The black tarp that used to be hanging off the edge is no longer there, whisked away by some unseen force, probably during the key moments Rusty wasn't hovering over the island. This is pretty solid proof that there are people still on the island fucking around with Epstein's shit, but we don't really get any more solid proof of this until the next video. Because a good 37 seconds into Rusty's next upload from July 23rd, I saw something that... Okay. So I don't know if I'm just going crazy here. Maybe my mind is looking for things on Pedo Island that aren't really there. I might be going a little bit stir-crazy here. But is that some fucking dude? Seriously, it's a blink and you'll miss it moment, but if you take a quick look at the bottom middle of the screen, right around the 37 second mark, there's what looks to be a person in dark clothing walking through Epstein's imported coconut trees. This, however, is more like a Sasquatch sighting than it is anything else. Okay, sure, that looks like a person, but we're going to need a lot more evidence than just some shadow hovering in the trees to know for sure if people are among Epstein's property. Well, this certainly doesn't look the way it did last time. This is a shot of Epstein's beach house from the last upload. As you can see, there's a visible 
virtual computer and some other knickknacks kind of strewn about inside his house. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. But then, in this latest video, a good amount of his personal property is just gone. The Mac's gone, his balled up headphones are gone, and now there's what looks to be strips of blue duct tape nestled around the corners of his windows. Almost as if someone had, I don't know, hung something up in front of the window so nobody could look inside while they rearranged Epstein's shit. Huh. I wonder who could have done something like this. Maybe it was the same people who put that cleaning hose or whatever inside the pool of his without a diving board. Well, these people certainly seem like they want to keep this felon's island clean, even of his own property. I wonder if we'll get a chance to meet these characters a little later. I guess we'll just put a pin in it for now and admire Epstein's taste in statues, such as this archer aiming his bow at something. Yet another mystery we can add to the tally of strange statues littered across the island. Oh, and right next to a running sprinkler system, too. How thoughtful. How thoughtful of Epstein's patrons to be watering the grass while he sits in his prison cell. Oh, what's this? Well, it doesn't appear as though taking care of the island and taking care of Epstein's personal belongings are the only things these mysterious people have been up to. It appears they've also been playing musical cars with Epstein's ambulance. At about two and a quarter minutes into the video, we can see that the ambulance, formerly parked in a garage before vanishing, is now in the middle of the road beside a big tarped up object. Of course, why an ambulance of all vehicles was moved to a different part of the island, I can't say for certain. I guess someone must have gotten hurt, so they had to call in Epstein's boo-boo police to make sure they didn't talk. I mean, to make sure they were okay. Yes. Actually, all jokes aside, I have no idea what the hell they'd need an ambulance for after Epstein was caught. The only thing I can think of is transporting goods they don't want being seen from the outside. And the only goods I can think of are, well, not so good. So before things get too dark, I'll just say that this ambulance mystery is far from solved. So let's just remember where it is for right now while we move on. And where better to go but back to Epstein's under construction temple. Not too much has changed, as we can see in this video and the next, but there is something about the following upload I want to point out. While Rusty's gone up to the windows of the temple before, this time around everything is a lot more visible and a whole lot clearer in terms of perspective. Now, the mattresses are weird and creepy, something we've already established from a previous video. But look at the long, rectangular back windows for a second. Second. Despite there being no doorknobs or anything, those seem like the kinds of things someone could just step out of if they wanted to leave the building, which makes me think that these giant windows are the actual doors to the temple. We've already established that the door itself at the front appears to be painted onto the wall, so it's more than likely that these windows are the true entrance. But that begs the question, how the fuck do you lock them? Like seriously, this seems like a really shitty design. Plus, look at how loose they look. Are they not done constructing them yet? I don't know, it just seems to me like these makeshift double doors could have been built with a little more tact, you know? The next two videos were also uploaded on July 23rd, but they don't contain a ton of interesting footage. In the first of these two clips, Rusty approaches two separate houses with blacked out windows. But, much like Epstein's failure to black out the windows of a house shown a few vids prior, he wasn't able to do it so well here either. That indistinct white shape in the window right here is proof enough of that. I guess when you become an old boomer like him, you just can't see all that well. Everything in the dark starts to look like nothing, so you black out your windows windows in the hopes no one will see anything. But oops, you didn't do it properly because you're a retarded pedophile. A retarded pedophile with a jacuzzi next to a big fuck you mirror. I don't think I need to explain the kind of vain fetish that involves a tiny jacuzzi and a mirror. Christ, what a pathetic asshole. As for the next video, it holds literally nothing of interest. I guess maybe these two slabs of wood leaning against a half wall near a dark green staircase is an interesting sight, maybe? But other than that, there's no real content to this video worth pointing out or dissecting. But then we come to the final three videos of today collection. The first two were uploaded on July 24th, and I have to say I don't think the term interesting even covers just how edge of your seat these next clips are. The first minute or so of the video isn't anything special. That is until Rusty makes his way to the part of the island with a half building built into it and a gas station right above it. He looks at a warehouse right near said half building, seeing that a few of the doorways are open, the lights off in the building. Some kind of unknown black shape is sitting just inside a few of the doors. To me they seem like they could be batteries or power sources of some kind, but again, just like the communications box from the first clip in this video, I can't say anything for certain. What I am certain about, however, is that there wasn't any ambulance here last time Rusty checked, but there certainly is one right now, sitting just on top of the half building, begging to be found by prying eyes. Now, I'm pretty sure this ambulance hasn't been teleporting its way across the island this whole time. Fairly certain someone needs to be driving the vehicle with the LSJ on the back, that of course standing for Little St. James, meaning it is in fact Epstein's. So who on earth could be driving Epstein's ambulance around on the island while he's sitting in a prison cell. Well, we find out as soon as Rusty pans away from the ambulance, because right as he's about to take off and go scouting for some more interesting footage from across the island, two dudes in a golf cart drive up to the building. Seriously, it's like something out of a spy movie. He just lifts away from the ambulance, and there they are, clear as day, answering the question we've had this whole time. Are there people under Epstein's pay still on his island? Yes. 
Yes, there are. And no more evident is it than when they pull up to a group of warehouses owned by Epstein, right near an ambulance they probably moved. Talk about getting caught red-handed. Although what I think is most interesting about this is that these guys have been strolling around this entire time, going about their business while Rusty's been filming the island. It just goes to show how big this place really is, alongside how few people are probably working under Epstein at this point. But I think it's reasonable to assume these few elusive people are, in fact, workers who are most trusted in Epstein's circle of employees. Otherwise, I don't think they'd be accessing his shit and doing work while he's locked up for molesting teenagers. After the golf cart drives up, we have our first, and rather short, car chase sequence. Rusty follows the golf cart up near the dock where we saw the group of people in the second ever clip Rusty filmed. They don't drive all the way up to the water, however, instead staying back under the shadow of a tree. This is when a new figure emerges, having sat still on the half wall this whole time up until this point. The cart itself appears to be loaded with small construction supplies or something. It's a golf cart, so obviously it won't be filled to the brim with shit for scaffolding or destroying, but there are a couple of random items in there that make me think construction supply drops are the vehicle's forte. This is the last interesting thing to happen in the video, with Rusty eventually making his way back to where the ambulance is now parked for the next clip. But before we move on, I do want to highlight once again just how major a development this is. We now have confirmation, undeniable proof, that there are at least three people on the island that were doing unknown work while Epstein was in prison. People who probably know a lot about who Epstein was and what he did on the island. If this is the case, the indisputable case, that there were people working for Epstein while he was imprisoned, then why hasn't anyone been questioned? I mean, let's step out of the narrative of Rusty's videos for a second and consider this. As far as we know, none of the people Rusty caught on tape were asked about Epstein after his alleged death in August. My question is, why weren't they questioned? Why wasn't everyone who had ever worked for him asked about his shit after his death? Because clearly, people were still out there messing with his shit even after he was arrested, so it would only make sense to question those people. So why didn't that happen as far as the public knows? God, what bullshit this is. But I've rambled enough for one video. Let's move on. The next video is a short continuation of the last one, and everything in the clips is chill until the big blue construction vehicle starts moving. It approaches a warehouse before stopping. Some guy gets out of it, goes up to a hose, and washes his hands, all while failing to notice the drone. Rusty, however, doesn't appear to be taking any chances today, and so he books it before the driver can look up. This tells us that all the construction work going on throughout the island isn't old. These trucks aren't just leftovers from a previous renovation. They're still renovating, still making changes to whatever Epstein left behind. And no more evident is this than in the final video we'll be taking a look at today. The video was uploaded two days after the previous batch, on July 26th. As with many of the other clips, the first minute or so doesn't tell us anything new. But, once we hit the 55 second mark, someone in a red golf cart starts to drive around. Rusty, of course, follows them, leading to a much longer car chase sequence than the last one. This goes on for a solid two and a half minutes before we're led to one of Epstein's houses. This is the house with the hose in the pool, or more discernibly, the one that used to house Epstein's now missing Mac computer. Computer. The golf cart pulls up near some guy sweeping stuff up outside. At first I thought he was laying down concrete with a fucking paint roller for some reason, but the second time Rusty gets him in the shot, it's obvious that's not what he's doing at all. Anyway, golf cart guy gets out and walks around the other side of the house. Rusty follows him and watches as he enters Epstein's house. So now we have confirmation, clear as day, that there were still people on the island working for Epstein, touching and moving and building his shit while he was sitting in a prison cell. And all the while, the FBI and other higher up organizations never stepped foot on the island to make sure any possible evidence against Epstein and his kid-diddling tendencies wasn't tampered with. Bravo, guys. As this clip shows, you all really stuck the landing on this one. Nice work just letting a half dozen guys wander around the island, possibly tampering with evidence that could bring Epstein to justice. God, this is fucking infuriating. These people shouldn't have been able to walk around as freely as they are in Rusty's video. They should have been sat down and questioned while all of Epstein's property was quarantined. Christ, what a disaster. Although things don't appear to be quite over yet. As Rusty pulls back around to the cart side of the house, he passes by the sweeper guy again, and this time he looks up and notices the drone. Golf cart guy walks out of the house, and sweeper tells him about the little robot hovering over their heads. Golf cart guy is just about to look up and see Rusty in plain sight, and even though I'm not too keen to end this on a cliffhanger, that concludes the 30th video in Rusty's catalog. Will Rusty make it out safe, or will his drone be yanked out of the sky by a man with a broomstick? Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure. Epstein, you slippery motherfucker. I have a feeling I know where you're hiding, and if I don't get drafted for the Third World War, you'd better bet your legally dead ass I'm going to prove where.